Good afternoon. <clears throat> I was a bit choked up. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. I'm doing this an hour early and I'll talk about that in a moment. This is episode 853. And the topic today is about uh, living life from a spiritual perspective and how you can be functionally effective doing that. Because before you think about how weird it's going to sound, I will explain. But before I do, let me jump to the beginning and say, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert. I'm also the, the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and also very passionate about helping women thrive in life, love and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and that's why I led to these talks over th almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And today, um, I'm doing something a little different. And that's basically to talk about more spiritual aspect stuff. And I'm going to explain why in a moment, because this is a much deeper topic than you might think, and more practical, because I'm very much about practical and spiritual fitting together. So today we're up to episode 853, and I've done a bunch of these in case you didn't figure that out by the number. <laughs> and I said it started over three years ago, almost three years ago, and I'll tell you where you find those at the back end of the broadcast. So hi, welcome to my broadcast. Today, um, I want to throw something into your awareness, <laughs> or invite something to your awareness, about how to live life in a more effective way from a spiritual perspective. I'm not going to give you sort of get-rich-quit schemes or any of that stuff. What I'm actually talking about is how do you deal with life's opportunities and challenges and experiences from a more elevated perspective. Now what I'm going to be very clear about is this is going to delineate from something I've, I've come to term two different ways, which is from one of my teachings is spiritual bypass, and from another teacher I know, uh, Lisa Nichols, calls it spiritual saran wrap. And so there is a temptation to look at spiritual perspective as being very prettied up, like contained and confined away from life so you don't get affected by it. That's avoidance. And spiritual bypass is also avoidance. So they both mean the same thing. And what I'm talking about here is none of that. What I'm talking about here is how do you function in the world, in your relationships, because that's my main focus of uh, conversation, but also in every area of life from a more practical and spiritual way and perspective as well. So let me set up some scenarios for you first. Let me say, okay, let me say this way first. It, good way for stuff to drop in. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you. This is an earlier broadcast than usual. This is a, this is 4 p.m. Pacific time. This is going live in case you're watching live. If you're watching the replay, you probably won't care. Uh, normally this goes out at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual go live time. So that's where I'm normally doing this. But today I'm at 4 p.m. because I'm actually going to a friend's uh, CD release party tonight and I have to go and do some other things beforehand. So I, my five o'clock time is booked, basically. So I'm going live an hour earlier. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, that may be why you've missed me, because you've been coming on, <laughs> watching me at 4 p.m. I'm not here, but today I'm doing it at 4 p.m. So let me jump into the topic and explain more about this principle. So perspective on living life. If you watch my broadcast at the usual time, in previous broadcasts, I talked a lot about self-love, self-support, and self-confidence um, in the way that how you take care of yourself, which is very fundamental. That's a spiritual teaching, by the way. And it's going to be part of what I'm talking about here. But the thing I want to talk about also is how we play victim in life. And you might be thinking, no, I don't play victim in life. It's like, well, let me ask you some questions. And these are not if questions, these are when questions. So I have a certain assumption about what you're going to respond with this. When you're driving on the freeway or in traffic and someone cuts you up, do you find yourself reacting to what happened? Do you start cursing them out or yelling or waving a fist or giving them bird or somehow some other symbolic expression of upset with the other person? That was one. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm at a fork in the road of where I'm going to go. Let me say this. Okay, that is a victim perspective. I'll, tell you, I'll explain that in a moment. So let me try and throw another couple out in your lap. Um, when you find out that the person you've been wanting to go out with is going out with somebody else, do you get upset or do you bless them? If you get upset, you're playing victim. I wonder if I need, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm realizing right now as I'm saying this, you may have already gotten the theme from those two alone, which is basically if something happens out there and you get upset, that's when you're playing the victim role. Now, you may be saying, well, I'm invested in something, I want it to happen, it's not working. You don't have to get upset about it. It's about how do you handle it. Yes, you may not like what happened, and hey, that's fair. But how you respond versus how you react, that's a difference, by the way, is very potent. 
And when you learn that you can actually respond to things from a different perspective, first of all, you remove the victim perspective. Secondly, you learn how to disengage your um, codependent personality, which is a powerful place, by the way. Secondly, when you do that, you get to learn as well how to have a more successful life. And I don't necessarily mean the get rich quick thing I was talking about earlier, we're not doing that. What I'm talking about though, is having a more fulfilled, more self-supportive, and a more appreciative way of living life that you feel good about. Because when it comes down to the end of it, when it comes down to the bottom line, at the end of life, as I saw a meme early today about this, it's not about the number of cars you have or the amount of money in the bank, it's how many lives you touched and how much joy you felt and how much love you have. And if that's what you're starting to realize more and more is the way you want to live your life, this will help you. So a couple of other things I want to throw out there or throw into your lap to consider, to, to, to have perspective on, is when you're in life, stuff does happen. All right, let me be blunt. When, when you're in life, shit does happen. <laughs> I figured I was going to be polite. It's like, you know what, just talk about the way it is. But the recognition is, is that those things happen not necessarily for a reason, but they usually, up, they usually tend to happen because of where you are in your life. Now, this is a big piece of the puzzle, by the way. When you start recognizing that things that happen around you that are directly affecting you, you have some input and control over why they happened and also how you can stop them happening again. Does interest, does this, does this, <laughs> let me try that while getting my teeth in straight. Does that interest you? Because if it does, I'll explain a bit more about it. I'm actually going to explain anyway, because I can't tell if you're, if you're actually responding or not. But I want to make sure you get this, this teaching point, because th th this has been uh, an, an underlying message of most of my 800 plus broadcasts for the last three years, is how we, how we relate to life. Well, to quote my alma mater, how you relate to the issue is the issue. Basically, how you relate to life is really the telling of your life story. Life doesn't happen to you. Life happens, life, life happens for you. You just may not understand it at the time. So how you deal with life from a spiritual perspective. I, I, was, talk, I was writing out some ideas. I've got a master, master class I'm going to teach about living life through, or looking, watching. I've got so many names for it. Looking at life through a spiritual lens was kind of one of the, the, the starting points I'm playing with. So this is, kind of, uh, this is kind of a spontaneous exposition of what I'm thinking about, talking about, and teaching. There are so many tools we have in our tool bag, at least I know I have from all the years I've been in studying, but how to deal with the upsets and challenges in life and also how to deal with all the good stuff that happens in life too because sometimes good things happen and that gets us more freaked out than bad stuff. Does that happen to you like that? I know sometimes when really good things have happened to me, I've almost felt like I don't deserve it. I've had to work through my own issues of deservedness and worthiness and other things that I'm still playing with. I'm not perfect on this, but I recognize more and more that the blessings that come in are reminders that good can happen. And when you really are tapped into your spiritual perspective, you see the good showing up more easily because it's almost like you're looking through the right lens. So, the, so it's almost like... It's like having a polarized lens that turns. If you ever had, if you had a polarized lens on a on a camera, camera lens, sorry, a polarized filter on a camera lens. I'm get the right language there. You may have noticed that when you do this, and I've had because I, I used to be a professional photographer, so I had lenses, lens, uh, filters, like that. When you hold your camera up and you focus and you change the polarized filter, you rotate it. What happens is it changes the line of polarization. And so, for example, if you take a picture with a swimming pool in front of you. You may get the sun hitting the swimming pool and you're getting blinded, like um, light sh shining up in the lens. But when you turn the, the polarized filter around, you actually turn it crosswise to the sun hitting that. Then you can see straight through into the pool itself. This is the power of polarization. If you have polarized lenses on your, on your uh, sunglasses, when you're driving the car, you'll see much more clearly and less reflection coming through the lens because of the polarization. It's also why when you turn your phone sideways with polarized glasses on, you get the lines with chain brightness to darkness. If you haven't tried that, you'll see that because the screen on your phone is also polarized. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> I went down the path to say that really when you start looking through a spiritual lens and seeing life a certain way, it's almost like you've turned the lens, the polarized filter around so you can see more clearly. And you start to see from a much more inclusive perspective. One of the challenges we have in life is that we go through life and something happens to us Somebody says something, does something, or doesn't do something, or hurts us, or we get wounded, or something. All sorts of things happen that upset us. And we tend to sort of cave dive into a place of limitation. And we can't see much. It's almost like we have tunnel vision into upset. 
And that's no way to live life. I'm pa hey, Gina, you must be on a break, I'm guessing. <laughs> Not Zima broadcast. I'm going early than usual, so maybe just coincidences, coincidences of time. So when you start to realize that you have a much bigger perspective, it's almost like you get to breathe in slowly and breathe in more fully, and you get to go deeper. Because the thing is, when we get upset with things, generally what happens is we shut down. We close up, we contract, we limit ourselves. So ability to respond gets extremely compressed. So you may be in a place where you find yourself being upset and you're going, well, I can't do anything. All I can do is react. It's like, yes, that's the way that life treats us. We don't learn how to go beyond that. So I realize I'm gonna give you like 17,000 pieces in one piece. Let me say this as a, as a cliff notes. This is a new theme I'm teaching more directly, more bluntly, because I've been talked about, I've been told by a couple of coaches to get off my butt and talk about this for months now. So I'm finally owning up to this. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna give you like a, a um, no, so that, that's not polite. <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm you with stuff in one go. So I'm going to give you, this is going to give, hopefully give you some over. This is going to give an overview. That's better to say it that way. So I'm not going to dive, dive in too deep because it will take me four hours at least. Well, the masterclass I'm creating will have all of that in it. That's a that's a hint, by the way, for what's coming. So say this again. <laughs> Having the polarized lens approach, or excuse me, polarized filter approach, let you see life more clearly. When you go through the upset, as I mentioned, you get contracted and, and, and confined, so you can't express fully. What's happening is you're not looking through the polarized filter. And what I mean by that is if when you're in upset, hurt feelings, woundedness, distraction, collapse, the only thing that you can do to free yourself is to get out of the collapsed state. And the way you can do that is as simple, as simple as taking slow breaths. The sound as crazy as it sounds. You know, this is about counting to 10. What happens though, if you do this the right way, which basically is you breathe, what, what you do, when you breathe in, but you breathe out more slowly, this is the key by the way, you breathe in faster, but you breathe out more slowly. It breaks the breath cycle, first of all, you're taking conscious breaths. Secondly, what's happening is it brings you present. Have you ever noticed that when you get upset with something or someone upsets you, hurts you, but you know, beats you up energetically, whatever it is, you tend to find yourself watching what's happening, but you're not present at what's going on. You don't have choice to, remo to, to respond. You tend to be in reaction mode. This is one of the ways you get back to responsiveness, which is basically you take a breath and come back to presence. Hi, Amanda. Thank you for being here. Uh, and I love that uh, you find that a thousand percent true. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, when you breathe and you bring yourself present, then you can respond. It's almost like the idea about getting so caught out of breath, you can't, you can't think, you can't, you can't respond, you can't do anything. It's like when you stop and take that breath in and you breathe out more slowly than you breathe in. This is the key, by the way. When you breathe out more slowly than you breathe in, what it does, it resets your, cort your, your frontal cortex. It brings you present and gives you the opportunity to respond to what's happening in a way that's different versus reaction, 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 which is what we tend to do. So this piece I'm giving you now, is, is this, this is the cornerstone of the work I'm starting to teach more and more now, which is to put you in a perspective where you can learn how to respond to life from a much more present and presence, two different words, place, meaning that you're actually able to be present to what's going on and then bring your presence forward so you can choose to respond how you want to and that my friends is freedom and freedom is one of the pieces that I love teaching because when you talk about having an understanding of a spiritual like looking through a spiritual lens you see life as choice points because for most people going through life it's, there's no choice like you've got to go to work you've got to do this you've got to do that and everything goes on when you see through the lens of spiritual sorry when you look through the spiritual lens I'm calling it for now again living life through a spiritual lens. That was kind of my working title for this masterclass that I'm putting together now, so stay tuned for that. When you start to see life from a spiritual perspective, again, polarized filter around so you can see more clearly, then you see more choice points, meaning that you start to see that life is much more in your favor than you may have first thought. There's a, a classic book by Viktor Frankl who was in the, prison, the uh, concentration camps during the war, and he wrote a book called A Man's Search for Meaning. And I haven't read the book, but I know some quotes from it because some of my teachers kept emphatically teaching me this. <laughs> Is that one of the things that he talked about in the book, because being in, a, being in a concentration camp, you think there's not many choices you can make. But he said the one thing we always have a choice about is our attitude, meaning we can choose how we want to respond to things. And again, as I said about the breathing and becoming present and seeing through that lens and polarized filters, all this stuff is to say that when you come to the place of choice, we come close that you can choose differently, then you have freedom to choose a different response. And that is the freedom 
a spiritual awareness. That's the freedom of a spiritual lens that I'm talking about here. And yes, well, Amanda, I didn't read the book, so you were ahead of me because you read the whole book, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> um, so this is something I'm putting into my practice more and more in my coaching and my teaching. I just so just so you can be, I can be transparent and talk about my background. Um, I've been on a conscious spiritual path since eighty five, eighty six, no eighty five. Excuse me. But I've been a spiritual licensed spiritual counselor for, for nineteen years now, and I've also got a background in spiritual psychology. But I've been avoiding all that to talk about relationships. I need to re I need to regroup. So this is a talk that's telling you I'm pivoting slightly in my messaging. I'm adding some more content to what I'm talking about. And if you're seeking more spiritual guidance and support, this is where I'm going in my work. So if you want some support, reach out to me. This is something that's new for me to be um, transparent about because it's always been in my work. But I'm bringing it more fully, more bluntly, more in direct, more directly into the world because I'm realizing we need that more and more. Watching what's happening in the media, what's happening with the news, what's happening in politics, what's happening to our, our, our global community. The more we can see through a spiritual lens and respond to life with authenticity, with authority, and with truth, the more we can change our relationships with everybody else. So it does apply to your love relationships too. This always comes back to that as well. But if you find yourself stuck with it, let's have a conversation. Um, I don't I don't have anything set up for this in terms of like what you can do to get help, but I will offer a few things in the, in the comments as links because I know this will always help. One of which is, um, well, basically, you can definitely reach out to me over social media if you want to discuss this more and get more help. But I will also put a link in the comments for a contact form because I don't have anything set up specific, specific, specifically. Specifically, it's not an ocean, it's a word. <laughs> Where you can reach out to me with a contact form to simply say that you watch my talk, you want to get some more help, and you want to find out how to talk about this. So that will send me that will send me your phone number and your email address. I'll email you back and we can set up a time to talk. So that will be in the comments. Secondly, I'll put in the comments my self-love practice because part of this work I've been adamant about this for over a year and a half now, more than that, over two years, because I just saw another broadcast from a while ago talking about this, is that when you love yourself first, when you truly do remember to love yourself, that shifts everything too, because when you start loving yourself, it's like taking that deep breath in and even slower deep breath out, is that you bring yourself present to who you are. And you stop living externally, you start living internally, and that's one of the journeys in that spiritual lens I was talking about. So those two would be in the comments. Um... I didn't mention my books. So I'm not going to put it in the comments. <laughs> you just you just grab the book off the shelf. I was saying, Amanda, you, let me see what it says. See more. You just grab the book off the shelf, open to page 66, and it says, and there are always choices to make every day, every hour. Offer the opportunity to make a decision, a decision which determined whether you would, would or would not submit to those powers which threaten to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom. Wow. that That's it. See, that's the thing. When you start to learn you have a choice, in every moment about how you respond to the world, you get your freedom back. But as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, for many people, we're caught up in upset reactivity to what's happening in the world, we forget we even have a choice. And that's the epitome in relationship of codependency. So I said, you can be a victim, be codependent, or you can be free to make your own choices. Yes, I, thank you, Amanda, I appreciate that. So with that, having, be, that being said, um, I'm going to sign off because I need to go and do some writing from what I've been thinking about since I said this. Add to my content for my masterclass. Reach out if you want some help. If you want to be part of that masterclass, message me as well. Again, links in the comments being my self love practice I mentioned. Also, a contact form so you reach out for support. And if you want to share this out with your friends, and I thank you, Amanda, for mentioning these other people, please share it with them as well. This is a pivot point for me in my work, even though it's number 853 in my list of broadcasts. <laughs> But it's getting more blatant to talk about spiritual principles, the way to live life more fully, which then changes every relationship you have, including love relationships and the way you work and your own health, support and life. This is going to move me forward in a new direction. and I hope you'll come with me. With that, I thank you for watching. Oh, replays. This is my Facebook Live I do every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but today it's 4 p.m. because I have to go somewhere instead and I'm not going to be available at 5 p.m. Um, this is always done on my, Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, which is Barry Selby. You can find me live at 5 p.m. usually, Pacific, 5 p.m. Pacific time right here. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby to author. You can find most of them there, but not all of them for some reason. So Barry Selby to author is my business page. Please like my page. And you can go to also find me on YouTube under Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, except I just finally created a new Instagram account, which is the real Barry Selby because my other account got hacked. So, um, but anyway, so YouTube, <laughs> you can subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called uh, messages for the masculine you can watch and watch 
those and see your belly stalks. This may become a new name down the road and may start retitling, we'll see. But um, you had the chills that happened to open that page. Yeah, I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, if you want some help, reach out to me. So thanks for watching. Um, hi, Steve. You have to watch in the beginning. I'm just signing off now. So I appreciate you being here for a moment. Um, so replays, links, content. You got, your, you got all your stuff. Watch from the beginning if you're catching the replay. I thank you for being with me as always. If you have questions, thoughts about this, please put them below or respond after I sign off. Again, reach out if you want some support. This is big stuff I'm talking about and it's just getting started. So thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. And uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.